With a hook grip, a wide stance, Trevino's method was unorthodox. However, he was very repetitive and solid through the ball. His stock shot was a low fade, which gave rise to his aphorism that you can talk to a fade but a hook won't listen. Coupled with top-class chipping and putting, his swing technique garnered six major titles. He liked courses with narrow fairways where he could exploit his accuracy. And they just started off and played. This with an eight iron from 152 yards. Vino's going with the driver. over there, I pulled the club out, took my 99, one waggle, poop. It became really surprising that uh, he played that one. Hello, I'm Barry, the Grey Golf Theatric. Welcome to my video on Lee Trevino. Trevino won the 1973 Chrysler Classics at the Lakes in Sydney. He was probably expecting the same level of success at Royal Melbourne in the 1974 Chrysler Classic. Judging by the fact he had won the PGA three months previously, he was at the height of his powers. Here's what his contemporaries had to say about his skills. Be pretty hard pressed to find a better shot maker that is a contemporary of mine. I think he's the best shot maker in my era. Prods it along the ground up the bank. And good Lord, look at that one. He's one of the very few players that could actually tell you what he's going to do before he does it. I thought Trevino and Hogan were the two best ball strikers I've ever played the game with. He was a magician hitting shots and he could just do anything. He would literally push the ball out into the fairway with a little bit of fade out there every time. Keeps the rhythm smooth. Well, you could listen to the sound of the, when he hit a golf ball. That ring to that sound, uh, every shot. You know if somebody's hitting the golf ball right. You don't have to see it, you can hear it. And Lee had that sound when he hit a golf ball. Trevino proved he could win in any social environment, on any course, save one. I think Trevino's problem with Augusta had to do with his own uh, feeling of social incompetence. I think Lee Trevino was uncomfortable at the Masters for two reasons. He didn't like the social feel of it, and he loathed the golf course. His first... Uh thoughts about the golf course were negative and he never let those uh, change and when you're negative about something it's very difficult to perform well. By sheer chance I was a spectator on the 10th of the West when Lee Trevino had his meltdown. This hole is one of the classic short par fours of the sand belt. It can really bite any golfer hard if it is not treated with respect. The green is small by Royal Melbourne standards. It's also on one of the highest points of the golf course. Go through the back and there is a 20 to 30 foot drop in elevation. So it is a blind chip back to the green. The flag is not visible. The flag is not visible from the left bunker either, referred to as Hell's Half Acre by the members. Trevino went through the back. I think he made double bogey with two putts and exclaimed if he had three putted, he would have walked off the course. Trevino himself said he probably would not have won at Marion if the rain had not interrupted play and made the greens more receptive to his low, faded approach shots. 
Like Augusta, Royal Melbourne Greens are hard and fast. There are quite a few greens that demand a high shot that lands softly. Now, believe me, it crossed my mind as, as soon as it started raining, I said, keep it up, baby. Keep it up. Now my low ball's gonna stop. Yeah, I'm not gonna have to try to go to the front of every green. See, I always had to try to touch the front of the greens so I could stop it in the middle. And I said to myself, I said, if it just keeps raining, it's, 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 gonna, it's gonna help me. The U.S. Open usually had to flight the ball. and You weren't bouncing the ball into Marion's greens. But I would say that, that a wet golf course favors Trevino more than a dry golf course. If you look at right after the rain stopped, I knocked it stiff coming out of there. What a marvelous shot. To this day, I don't think I could have beat him if the rain doesn't come. I think Trevino developed the same mindset about Royal Melbourne as he did about Augusta. It was a course he could not win on. As the winner, Bob Shearer, noted, it was strange because Trevino shot a 66 in the third round. I do have a happier memory of Lee Trevino. He was playing with the late, great Seve Ballesteros in one of the televised celebrity events. On the 18th tee, Ballesteros had just teed up his ball. Trevino rattled off something in Spanish. Ballesteros cracked up completely. He was laughing so hard he had to back away from addressing his ball three or four times before he could hit. To this day, I would love to know what Trevino said. My next video will be about Greg Norman. Until then, good golfing.